and we're on air. So I'm going to mute us and I'll get you to introduce yourself. Go ahead. So my name is James Allen. I'm a, one of two librarians here at Eminence Independent Schools. We're actually, the name is kind of confusing. It's not a private school, but it's a school that's independent of the county that we're in here in Kentucky. It's kind of in between kind of in the middle of Louisville, Cincinnati, and Lexington, like in that triangle, kind of in the middle of Kentucky. So actually, I'll, I'll bring it up on Google Maps if that's all right. I'll share my screen in just a second. I think. Let's see here. All right, so here is Eminence. I'm gonna zoom out. Can you all see this? Yes, we can. Yeah, so we're right, right there. Where that little blue dot is kind of in the middle of nowhere. I mean, it's a it's a really small town. Um, it's it's kind of a. A, a small town in the middle of a more rural area where there's lots of uh, agriculture farming type things going on. We're a K through 12 school. So we have kindergarten through 12th grade and total we have about 800 students. We also have a preschool. I'm not probably with, I don't know their numbers exactly, but about 800 students K through 12. So we're in our third year being in this new space right here, which includes our new library. You can see the older part of the school over here. The school's been here for over 100 years. This was not a renovation. It was an addition to the older part of the building. So if that helps with some of the background a little bit, this is the new entrance to the school, new front office, um, some administrative offices. There's also four or five new high school classrooms up on the top floor in here that I'll show you in a second. But other than that, most of this new space is our library, which we call the Ed Hub. And it's a a very cool acronym. It stands for Experimental Da Vinci Hybrid Ultra Biblioteca, I think. Sometimes I get those mixed up. Um, can you all see the screen okay? Yes, yes. All right, so if you've never used it, this tool is pretty cool. It's called UVisit. You can actually create little stops on your visit and you can upload a map. Let me, let me uh, make this bigger. So this kind of shows you the floor plan. There's the first floor and then the second floor. We're sneaking out. Okay, make sure you come back. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so so Jay, can I interrupt you with a question about the you what you're using right now? Yeah. If students wanted to create something like that, is that free or did you pay for that? It was free, but you could also use Google Tour Creator, which is fairly new, like in the past, I don't know three, four or five months, it, it lets you create kind of the same thing. You can upload your own 360 photos. So all of the 360 degree photos in here, I, I took with my iPhone. It's not like a fancy camera or anything. I just, I use the Google Street View app and did the awkward thing where you turn around and take a bunch of pictures until you get the entire 360 thing stitched together. So yeah, really anybody with a phone could create the 360 images and then you could use your computer to create the either you visit tour or um, Google tour creator. They work pretty similarly. You can do some audio embeds and images that pop up and things like that. So. Cool. Thank you. Okay. I didn't mean to interrupt the tour. No, you're good. So here is the entrance. We're going to go in right here and that takes you into our, what we call the core. So I think of it as kind of that space in your library where all the wooden heavy tables are usually in most traditional libraries, the place where you sit, but ours is a little bit different. Um, one of my favorite parts of our, about our library is that it's so flexible, like we can change how it's used in, in literally minutes. Like this furniture can be moved, we can set up chairs for this little kind of mini stage presentation area. We have nine TVs that are tied together right here that kind of turn into one big giant display. So you can either hook up here or we have another computer in the closet that we can use. I don't think this, this video may not work. <laughs> All 
don't know how well you all could see that, but we had a student whose dad was a pilot and he brought in this flight simulator and we hooked that up for everybody to use on the big screen. It was a lot of fun. We also use this space a ton for uh, museum days where students are showcasing their projects and things like that. So I think this is an example of that. Same space, just set up differently. And then I think I put a video in here, it's kind of quick. So here are tables all kind of like a more traditional type setup where we have some PD going on. So I love how the space can be used for lots of different things, even though it's all in the same spot. We have a giant programmable E on the ceiling where eminence, so that's what the E stands for. You can program it to be different colors. We actually had a prom here in the core. So let me show you that real quick. So you don't think about your prom being in the library too often, but it works out pretty well when you got all the lights and the screen program kind of the same way. And we have this giant slide in the corner and it's just for fun. I mean, it's like the quickest way to get from the second floor to the first floor. So kids use it every day in between classes just to come downstairs. And I think there's a video of me. It's pretty quick too. Like you have to be like, it's fast. I don't want to make anybody dizzy, sorry. I don't know how big your screen is right now. So from this vantage point, like when we first come in the building, you can see these eight labs right here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those those are kind of individual rooms, but they also have walls in between them that can be opened up to make it into four bigger rooms. The same thing right here with these rooms on the first floor. We have teachers in these first two, but we have a third one that's flexible so that people can sign up for. And then those walls open also to make one big giant room. And they're floor to ceiling, whiteboard, magnetic walls, so they're pretty flexible. Um, I think next is just the hallway. I wanted to show you, we have a hologram projector right behind the TV. That's in the wall right here. I don't know, let's see if this video, you may not be able to see it, but kind of a butterfly floating around the inside of that one. And then if you, you can kind of see the old older part of the school right there, this goes to our middle school hallway. And then next, we're going to go down those little steps. And this is where we have our shelves for our books. So it, it may look like our library is kind of in the hallway, and it kind of is, which I guess could be thought of as good or bad. But what I like is that the access to the books is never shut down. Like you can't, it doesn't get shut down during testing because people aren't testing in the hallways. Um, it's a flexible space. We have, I'm actually sitting in this little chair right here right now. And we have, this is all, it looks a little bit different right this second. This is chalkboard paint on the walls. This room back here is kind of our library office. It's got a drive-in window, drive up window. I'm not exactly sure why, but it's fun. There's the inside of our office. I took a picture one day when it was nice and neat. Usually it was a little more messy than that. And then I think this is, yeah, you can see back in this hall. This is where I'm sitting in that red chair right there. So we also have a physics wall that's on the wall down here. So And I think next I'm going to show you the first lab that we have. So this is where we keep our woodworking tools. And I kind of took a picture on a day that it was in use just to kind of give you an idea. We have lots of plays and drama productions that go on and we make prop, props in here with just pretty much standard, you know, woodworking shop type tools. So it's not a shop class per se, like where you might go in a school where they have like tons and tons of tools for a whole class to have all at once. It's, it's really more where we, just house the tools in here when we need them. And then you can see the whiteboard walls that I was talking about that can collapse and make this a uh, bigger room. So next is our, what we kind of call our senior maker lab, not necessarily for older people, but it definitely gets used K through 12, but it's a little bit more techie. So we have two laser cutters in here. I don't know if you've seen those before. They, they are actually lasers and they cut through things like wood and acrylic and paper and cardboard. We have a giant printer right there. We have a 3D printer here, 
a vinyl cutter right here. It's kind of like a giant cricket machine. This TV kind of helps with giving instruction to students when we're working on using these tools. Like a group of kids can see that screen a little bit better than just the little one. And then we have three more smaller 3D printers right here on the back wall. And then storage for all of our leftover materials. We try to use a lot of things that are scrap or free for the laser cutters and things like that. No. Sorry about that. Um, next in line in the labs, we're still on the first floor. This is kind of our robotics lab. We have little bits on the wall there. This is where we kind of house all of our robotics things, oh, spheros, ozobots, uh, our Bloxels collections in here. And then you can see the, the in this picture, the wall is actually opened up into that fourth lab on the first floor. So you can see what it looks like collapsed. And then this is kind of our junior maker lab where we keep a little bit more of our arts and craft type supplies, a big giant Lego wall. You can see the slide outside the window there. All of the labs have curtains that come down if you want a little bit more privacy. Everybody's still with me? I'm doing lots of talking, sorry. No, we're still with you. Does anyone have a question so far about what he's shown us? How did they build that? So a question is, how did they build it? Did you guys get contractors to come in, obviously, and um, you created the plan for it? Is that what you want to know? What was that question? I'm sorry. That last one. So they made it as a part. So one of the questions is just, um, what? how did you create such an open space? But was that your design your sort of idea and then you got contractors to create it how did that come about so i have a feeling there were probably a, i don't really know this for sure i mean i know they they decided on a final architect for the job and that architect submitted the plans probably after lots of meetings with our um district administration and teachers on kind of what they were wanting to see I came the year that they broke ground, so that probably that initial planning part of the actual space came before I got here. But I think it was always, you know, part of the plan to have a just a really flexible space that could be changed into lots of different things. Just something we're we're definitely on the far end of the spectrum in terms of like what a traditional library looks like. So I, th I know they went on some different visits some, to some different businesses and companies and offices, and just to get some ideas on what things would look like. I did, where I showed you our office, that part I did ask to have changed after I got here. So it was on the opposite wall, like where the bookshelves are. I thought it would just be easier for the flow of things if that kind of little office area was more in the corner. So that, I mean, I did kind of help get that wall moved before things were all the way completed. So that was kind of cool. The bookshelves are actually custom built. We actually designed those ourselves. Like we, I, I drew some pictures, I did some things in SketchUp. I kind of wanted shelves that just didn't look the same as every other single library I've been in. And this, at least in our area, I feel like they're all kind of that same kind of wooden, really heavy library shelf. These are actually curved a little bit so that the books on the very bottom are a little bit easier to get to. They kind of stick up, up in the air a little bit. Um, but I had a lot of say in that. And then everything else in terms of furniture, I just wanted things that were super flexible. So this is one of the only rooms where the chairs don't have wheels because we have some little bitty kids in here and it's a little too much for kindergarten and first grade to be in. It's kind of hard to plan furniture for that wide range of kids. Um, these tables flip up with like one little click of this button underneath and they can be moved out and put away in another place. So this room can turn into a, we can get the whole first grade in, in these two labs right here in about five minutes. So that part's really cool. Does that awesome. answer that question a little bit? I think so. And then we had another question in terms of how long did that all take? Um, it took about a year from when the, they broke ground to completing it at the end of that next summer. So about a year. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how long the design process went on before that. but. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is that third room on the bottom floor I was telling you about. We have two teachers on either side of those walls, but this is a flexible space that can be 
signed up. We actually, all these individual labs and rooms, we have a Google Calendar connected to them, and there's a little LCD panel on the outside of the wall. So if it's in use, it's red, and if it's not, it's green, and you can walk up and actually type in your own appointment into it. Or I can see it on Google Calendars, you know, like either from my phone or my computer. So it kind of helps keep things organized and know who's using which part of the space. Um, this is upstairs. So we kind of walk up the staircase behind that big TV I showed you earlier. There's a little spiral staircase. This is looking down. And then if you turn this way, this kind of goes back around. So the, the labs kind of mirror themselves. There's the bottom floor, there's four of them, and then there's four on the upper floor. And this is the hallway that would be kind of right above where the books are. There you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but you can see one of those little panels I was talking about for the scheduling. Are they built into the wall, those LCD projectors? Um, They're mounted. It's, it's almost like a little tablet that's just kind of permanently there on the on the wall. And okay. it, I think it runs some kind of version of Android where it's just really just showing Google Calendar all the time. Um, the upstairs labs are, are way more flexible. They're not really specific to one type of thing. We did have a lot of math manipulatives in this first red one. Um, this blue one was more of a biology type lab. We have some hydroponic towers and a few animals that live up here. Um, you can see looking down right there into the core. I'm going to jump to this room. These are the, the next two labs. Kind of, this is our communications lab. We have a wall of these MC squares. They're, they're magnetic whiteboards. You can take them all down individually and do some brainstorming or storyboarding and then put them back up in different orders. We keep our Google Expedition kit right here. We have some phones and viewers that we use there. And then our studio is the next lab over here where we have a green screen wall. It's where we keep all of our cameras and video equipment. Um, some giant puppets that kids love to make videos with against the green screen wall. And then I think I have one more spot on this tour. This is the entrance to our elementary hallway. So you're kind of going from like this super, not super traditional, but a kind of a more neighborhood type feel in our elementary hallway. And then you kind of go through this cool space mountain-ish type entrance into our Ed Hub. Kind of connects to the new part right there. And the floor is really cool. When you walk on these, it shows your footprints called lava tiles. I think. Yeah, that's the last one. So that's pretty much the space. Any other questions? Question. All right. So we have a question about cost. <laughs> about cost. Okay. Yeah. Do you even know how much it costs to redesign that space? I feel like I don't. Quote me, I know I'm being recorded. I think it was about six million for the entire addition to the school. Wow. So that includes the, all the new front office, those new high school classrooms that are up on the top floor too that I didn't really show you. So I think total that's probably a, a close number. Okay, so we don't have that much money, um, clearly. But if you were to say, this is my question. If you were to say what your absolute, like this has to be in any new innovative library space, uh, maybe your top three, what would it be? Like what gets the most, and, and the criteria is what gets the most used? Um, what do you feel is like every modern learner should have it? Um, and you just, it's a personal favorite of yours. What would your top three be? Um, I think first is flexibility and that, I guess it kind of includes the furniture and the walls that move. It's kind of hard to say, I mean, you know, this is a librarian, but like we, any given day is just a completely different game. We may be maybe doing a presentation with an entire grade level where they're doing like a mock debate out in the core, or we have kids checking out books every day. We have an entire first grade coming together to do a lesson on economics. So everybody's got to get in one spot. We have some other flexible furniture that you didn't probably didn't see in the pictures, like some nesting kind of little benches. So really, I think just being able to change the space in a, in the matter of minutes compared to like some of the older libraries I've been in where literally I could not move the shelves because there was no carpet underneath. So I think it's those two extremes that I, that, is what I like the best about this space. 
Um, I guess other than that flexibility, I mean, having a variety of tools available is really helpful. I, we're in our third year and I think just now students are starting to realize they can pretty much create or make, or we can support anything that they're doing in any of their classes, no matter really what the project is. Um, they know they can come to us and just the other day we had some students come and ask for a light bulb. And even though we don't have light bulbs ready to check out, I knew where we could get some. It was just cool that they're coming to me and my partner librarian for, not that books are not important. We still definitely have a, a book collection. We have an overdrive ebook collection, but they're coming to us for really all the resources they need for their classes. And we do all kinds of collaboration with our teachers too. Um, those are two. Okay, we'll give you two. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions, friends? Go ahead. Okay, yeah. In one, of the, in one of the classroom, it looked like there was a Smitty thing. What is that? What was that? It was it was beside the biology lab. It looked like, question, James? It looked like a spinning wheel, kind of like the ones that you wheel. Oh, play. yeah, we have uh, some <laughs> carnival games that are, I guess, themed with our, uh, you know, our school name and colors. So those get used for like fall festival and those type of games, but also can even be used for like math lessons, like where we're talking about probability and those type things. So it's, it's just some more, um, our school leadership definitely believes in surprise and delight and like making school kind of a fun place to be. So some of these, like those lava tiles are not educationally, you know, like a really, something, some kind of tool that you're gonna use educationally, but it just kind of makes being in the space more fun. It makes like, I like how the colors are really bright and it feels like a nice place to be in. Kind of like you're walking into, I don't know what to compare it to. I've been to a few Google offices. It reminds me of those a little bit. Um, I don't know if you go into some stores, you know, like you go in the lighting is really good. There's, you just kind of get a good feeling when you go in there instead of just going into a, just a dark low ceiling type place. Well, we definitely have a big uh, ceiling and some light, so we have lots to work with, lots of potential, but uh, we'll see how we do here. The students are, um, you know, using their creativity and, and have started planning already, so this has really been helpful, James. Um, friends, do you have any other questions before we let him get on with his day? Yeah, last question? I don't, wouldn't think so. You're not a Catholic school, are you? You're an independent school? No, we're independent, but we're a public school. So we're, the, we're not a private school. We're still a public school. We're just independent of the county schools around us, if that makes sense. I don't know how it is where you are, but. Yeah, they, yeah. We so it works really differently here in Canada. I'll, uh, I'll be sure to give them a little uh, rundown of how it works when we're done here. But yeah, I do want to most schools in Kentucky, we're, you know, it's based on the county, the little area that you live in as a public school. But there are, there are other private schools, but we're, we're, we're in the public school system, though. He said 800 kids, right? K-12. So, James, guys, what do you say? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for spending uh, some time showing us around. And if we have any other questions, I'm going to uh, get the students to head back and talk to you. Yeah, I'll, I'll send you a link to a photo album, too, that I have that shows a few of the things going on in the space, too. It might help compared to some of the 360 photos. That's amazing. Thank you again so much. All right. See you later. Take care. Bye-bye. So I'm not going to stop the broadcast. Um, I just saw John. Maybe I should stop the broadcast.